good morning everyone i'm dr priyanka and uh, today's lecture topic is um treatment planning uh, coming to the learning outcome the first three i've covered in the previous uh, introduction i'm not taking it again uh, here i'm going to focus on the lower uh, six outcomes which is uh, retainers and pontic designs abutment selection diagnostic wax up and the wax properties and how to make a good diagnosis and preparation the elements involved in that uh, for fixed prosthodontic treatment and various clinical and lab steps for fabrication of fixed prosthesis. Okay, the evaluation of the abutment teeth. First, we are going to um, talk about the replacement of a, placing a single missing teeth. In this, usually we will be giving a three unit RPD, uh, sorry, three unit FPD. Uh, we'll take uh, support from both sides of the missing um, span. Uh, so we will have one mesial and one distal abutment tooth. Um, yes, uh, Rosenstiel, uh, Rosenstiel textbooks believes that um, if you're replacing a maxillary or mandibular canine, um, a small anterior abutment tooth needs to be splinted to the central incisor to prevent the lateral drifting of the FPD uh, or fixed dental processes that is the FDP yep um so again it can be done either ways guys either you take abutments from both the sides or it can be done it done this way uh, Coming to a cantilever fixed dental processes, um, here uh, one side of the pontic is attached to the retainer and that is what is cantilevered, right? Long term prognosis is poor and it would cause tipping, that's why it is a little harmful. You can see that um, replacing a lateral, uh, there is tipping because this is a cantilever tipping and because of that rotation is there because of when the force is applied however when splinted to both the sides the forces are less so for a successful um, single abutment cantilever requires very favorable yeah uh, assessment of the abutment teeth so yes you can use the radiograph you can use the pulp testing yeah and see how healthy it is. It can be endodontically treated abutment. Um, yeah, it can also have a person core. Uh, failure occurs, however, on teeth with short roots or with little remaining coronal structure. So that has to be taken care of, guys. If that is the um, um, if that is uh, uh, the current situation then you're supposed to build it up, right? Do a post and core. Unrestored abutment are highly ideal. They're caries free and they're very optimal. Thing. Uh, several teeth, okay. So here, overloading of the abutment teeth. Uh, if you do an overloading, there will be drifting and there will be a lot of issues. So particularly, especially in the parafunctional clenching habits, it will probably damage the dentition okay so coming to direction of forces um, where is the magnitude of any applied force is difficult to regulate a well fabricated uh, dental process it distributes the forces equally um, <clears throat> sorry uh, potentially damaging lateral forces can be confined to the anterior teeth where they are reduced by longer liberal arm, right? Other than that, the root surface area. So very important, guys, the anti's law comes into picture here. So the root surface area of potential abutment must be assessed when treatment for pre prosthodontic is planned. This is suggested by anti's. And he suggested that it was unwise to provide a uh, fixed partial denture when the root surface area of the abutment was less than the root surface area 
of the teeth being replaced, which is known as the Antilles law. Okay, so according to the GPT, the glossary of prosthodontic terms, the combined parasympathetic area of all abutment teeth supporting a fixed dental process should be equal or greater in parasympathetic area than the tooth or teeth to be replaced. Okay, we'll be seeing photos in the next slides. Uh, coming to the root shape and angulation where when root support is water lined adequate the shape of the root and the angulation should be considered right posterior teeth with multiple root can be used and will act like with a better support rather than a single um, rooted teeth right so coming to the periodontal diseases, after horizontal bone loss, the periodontal ligament oh, sorry guys, the periodontal ligament or supported root surface area will be drastically reduced. Okay, so best crown root ratio is two is to three, guys, right? That is very ideal in the photo one. Yes, favorable. It also can be one is to one. Okay, so the ratio is a measure of the length of the tooth occlusal surface to the alveolar crest of the bone compared with the length of the root embedded in the bone. Okay, right. Um, again, anti is law, guys. So, parasympathetic area of the abutment teeth is greater than the parasympathetic area of the teeth being replaced right in the second photo you can see is the parasympathetic area of abutment teeth is equal to the parasympathetic area of the teeth being replaced okay so this is equal right two pontic and two abutment here there are three abutments and two pontic guys. Okay, coming to the span length, if you have excessive flexing under occlusal load, if you have a very long span, probably flex and fail, right? There will be chipping of porcelain, breakage of the connector, losing of the retainer, and thus you should not make an extremely long span bridge. Uh, coming to the third aspect of which is replacing multiple anterior teeth, uh, the four mandibular incisors can usually be replaced by a simple fixed dental processes with the retainer on each canine. Uh, unlike the mandibular incisor, the maxillary incisors are not positioned in a straight line. Uh, particularly in the different arch forms, tipping forces must be resisted by means of two abutments at each end, guys. You get it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, coming to the retainers. So, according to GPT, um, the part of the fixed dental processes that unites the abutments to the remainder of the restoration is known as the retainer okay this is the pontic abutments and this whole part is the retainer and in the middle is the connectors okay all right so what are the requirements of a retainer guys to withstand masticatory forces to restore anatomy of the tooth um should have proper pulp, pulp consideration uh, aesthetics and hygienic. It should have proper hygiene. So classified in three types: that is, the extracoronal retainer, intracoronal, and radicular. Uh, coming to resin-mounted retainers. So, uh, according to GPT, a fixed dental processes that is fixed to tooth structure sorry guys this is fixed to tooth structure primarily the enamel which has been edged 
to provide mechanical retention for the resin cement, right? To overcome the tooth reduction required for placement of a retainer. So that is the GPD definition of resin bonded retainers, right? It can be classified under Watchet Bridge, Maryland, and Virginia Bridge, right? So Virginia Bridge is it uses um uh, the loss salt technique or uses particles roughness to roughen the retainers in the inside right to provide better retention ratchet bridge is a resin bonded fixed dental process incorporating holes within the metal framework and loots to the lingual aspect of the teeth adjacent to an edentula space that replaces one or more teeth guys okay so it incorporates holes yeah just to increase the retention maryland bridge on the other hand uses an acid etching of the metal plate eliminated the need for perforating perforation right this is how you can replace one teeth right Coming to intracoronal retainers now, guys. So intracoronal means within the normal contour of the clinical crown of a tooth. Can be classified as an inlay and onlay retainers. Inlay is the most common one used. So this is an inlay, inlay, inlay. This is a crown being replaced. Onlay sits on top. This is very uncommon, guys. Yeah. Okay. Coming to a radicular um, retainer, which means pertaining to the root of the tooth. It consists of postern core that obtains its retention resistance to the displacement from the prepared root portion of an endodontically treated tooth. So it can be custom made or prefabricated, that's the post, depending on the post length, shape, diameter surface configuration can be classified as only post post and core uh, pin ledge or combination of them, right so this is basically post post and core yeah this is pin ledge restoration can you see the holes guys yeah that's how okay coming to Pontics now, so definition and classification. So pontic is an artificial tooth on a fixed partial denture that replaces a missing natural tooth to restore its function. So this is a pontic, this is abutment, okay? So classification is depending on the shape of the pontic contacting the tissue, depending on the material, depending upon the manufacturer's design. Okay, so depending on the design, mucosal contact and no mucosal contact. There's ridge lap, modified ridge lap, conical, ovate, sanitary, and modified sanitary. Based on materials used, metal ceramic pontic, resin veneered pontic, all metal pontic. You can see all those. Yeah. Coming to prefabricated porcelain pontics, these are just the facings, guys, right? So they are commercially available porcelain pontics, which can be altered by the dentist and reglazed if necessary. At types, um, uh, true pontic, sanitary pontic, steel facing, slotted, long pin, harmony, reverse. So this is interchangeable facing, reverse pin facing, Pin facing, true pontic, and on tips. Okay, so this is also available. So available pontic systems you can see. Um, metal ceramic, all metal, uh, fiber reinforced, all resin, and the facings, right? So it's the same things we have discussed. Okay, coming to the pre-treatment pre assessment. So the pontic space registered will ridge contour and surgical modification. Firstly, the ideal ridge contour um, should have smooth regular surface of attached gingiva with adequate width 
and hyperplantic placement. Free of renal attachment and must sustain the appearance of interdental papilla. Ideal ridge contour varies with type of pontic to be used for modified ridge and for ovate pontic. For bulky ridge contour, the ridge may be excessive due to hard or soft tissue, right? Surgical correction can be done as uh, gingivoplasty and osseous reduction, right? For hard tissue and soft tissue, okay? Coming to the classification of deficient ridge contour. So according to Siebert, this is important, guys. According to Siebert, class 1, buccolingual loss of tissue within the normal tissue height, epicocoronal loss of tissue with normal tissue width, combined loss in both the directions, right? Okay, so now I'm coming to the pontic design, so ridge lap pontic looks like a natural teeth, can you see? That's how the one large concave contact on the ridge um oblique to uh, um obliterating uh labial uh lingual and proximal embrasure over overlapping the ridges difficult to clean right so it just looks like it's out of the gums yeah may cause tissue inflammation not an ideal guys yeah coming to modified ridge lap looks like that design gives an illusion of a tooth it possesses it possesses all or nearly all convex surfaces for ease of cleaning lingual surface has deflective contour prevents food impactions right so this is more ideal yeah like that right conical pontic uh, rounded cleansable um tip is small in relation to overall size usually used for ma thin mandibular ridges uh occasionally used in broad flat ridge resulting in large triangular embrasure area collects food debris Aesthetically also not so good look. Coming to ovate pontic. So that's how ovate looks like. Um, indicated in the aesthetic zone. Yeah. Rounded tip. Uh, a little blunt. Placed in concave part of the crest of the ridge. Concavity created by provisional restoration. Used in broad or flat ridges. sanitary or hygienic pontic guys no contact with e dentulous area sanitary pontic used in an it can be used in a non appearance zone or non aesthetic zone mandibular first molar can be used it restores function stabilizes adjacent and opposing teeth um aesthetically pleasing aesthetically pleasing sorry modified sanitary pontic so occlusion gingival thickness should not be less than 3 mm enough space between ridge and pontic guys here convex both mesiodistally and labiolingually um this rounded design also is known as a fish belly Okay, uh, coming to a summary chart or table, which is very important. This has to be remembered and known very well. Sanitary pontic, um, uh, given in the posterior mandible, saddle ridge, not recommended, conical molars without aesthetic requirement, modified ridge lab, high aesthetic requirement, anterior teeth and premolar, some molars ovate in maxillary incisor cupids uh, sorry cuspids and premolars 
So, and we can read. We have already discussed the advantages and disadvantages, guys. Okay. Um, now, coming to the diagnosis part, the elements which brings us to a good diagnosis of an FPD. Um, so here, a clinical or general examination first has to be done that is divided into extraoral and intraoral. In extraoral, you have to do head and neck examination, TMJ evaluation, muscles of mastication evaluation. In the intraoral examination, oral hygiene status has to be recorded. The nature quantity of saliva has to be seen. Um, examination of, of teeth has to be done. The crucial examination and the parental examination. Coming to the radiographic examination, the remaining two, the bone support and bone quality has to be checked. The root number, the morphology, the periodontal space, if any um, symptom of TFOs, right? Resorption or any frication involvement, any carious lesions, lesions or pulpal status, any peripical pathologies, any retained root, any calcification, right? Or any oral manifestation of uh, systemic diseases, right? So there are two factors, which is general and local factors, which are involved. So general factors, all the systemic problems come into play. Medical history has to be taken, um, sorry, should be evaluated properly. History and success of previous dental treatments has to be taken into consideration. Local factors, vertical overlap of interior teeth, impactions, tooth mobility, tooth angulation, tooth structure, crown root ratio. So mostly all we have discussed this, so I'm not going in detail. Okay, so finally, diagnosis and prognosis consist of, diagnosis consist of dental and medical history, clinical examination, diagnostic picture, any cast, wax up that I'm going to cover soon. The next slides, radiographic films we have already covered. Prognosis then will give you a general factor and what has to be considered the age and the oral environment, local factors such as occlusion and uh, the oral hygiene uh, status and uh, again, the other factors which was discussed guys, okay? So these all has to be taken into consideration. Yes, you can write in detail for each of the following. All right. So now, uh, talking about the diagnostic impression and cast. So here is an example of the diagnostic impression and cast. Um, in general, the diagnostic impression is uh, usually... Uh, taken by an alginate and a stock tray, high quality with no voids. Um, the impression, sorry, yeah. A clinical instructor must authorize the impression before pouring, of course. Uh, type 3 dental stone is used to pour the cast, and these are the base, the base of the cast, and the land area, right? Okay. So you can see the diagnostic cast, this is mounted on... Um, uh, semi-adjustable articulator that is the HANA articulator so these are just the study models guys you take a occlusal bite registration and you mount the cast right and just see and then do some wax up procedure so we'll be talking about wax up soon so diagnostic casts provide valuable prelim information comprehensive comprehensive overview of patients needs treatment procedures can be rehearsed on the stone cast before making any reversible changes in the patient's mouth. Use for diagnostic wax up, prelim RPD design, surgical stent, surgical procedures, help to explain intended procedure to the patient, right? Diagnostic wax up, uh, diagnostic wax up must be completed prior to beginning any reconstructive treatment so casting processes or definitive periodontal therapy right so 
any of the wax up has to be done before starting any treatment, right? So when you do wax up means you build the teeth by wax on the model, on the study model, study cast or the diagnostic cast. So usual to show proposed treatment to the patient used for fabrication of provisional restoration, fabrication of final restoration, Provide specific information about desired tooth length, occlusal anatomy. Also a very good tool for technician communication. Okay. So you saw those and now you see this. So this is a case mixed with an FPD and an RPD, guys, a CPD. Right? So once we mounted it and now after the wax up, this is what we get, guys. Right? So we can just show the patient this. All right. So coming to the properties of these wax used, so the wax should be uniform when softened, the color should contrast with the dye material or prepared teeth, the wax should not fragment into flakes or similar surface particles when it is molded after softening, the wax must not be pulled away by the carving instrument or chip as it is carved or such provision cannot be achieved the wax pattern should be completely rigid and dimensionally stable at all time until it is eliminated guys okay so these properties of wax is important okay coming to the last slide uh steps finally the steps in fabrication of a fixed partial denture the clinical and the lab steps so first of all examination and diagnosis comes then the preliminary impression and wax bite coming to pouring of diagnostic cast and mounting on the articulator using a wax bite like just now we talked about then when the patient comes back we do a tooth preparation gingival retraction secondary impression shade selection usually would we would do the shade selection even before yeah then coming to the lab procedures so now the interim restoration will be made in the lab um pouring of the master cause the dye preparation dye trimming fabrication of the wax pattern sprueing investing casting trimming finishing right and then again in the clinical procedure is a metal trine and then there will be a porcelain build-up glazing and then there will be a um porcelain trine or a cementation procedure usually we would skip metal trine procedure guys but then ideally, ideally this is how it goes guys right okay so here's the bibliography rosen steel and schellenberg remains a standard textbooks thank you so much for patiently guys for any further questions please come and see me